Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is add relative location. Let's go ahead and we'll look at the example. Not really going to see too much here. I have three items. This is all one actor consisting of three static mesh components. I'm asking the relative location of this cube to change when I change these values. So let's say 200 in the Y. And you'll notice the cube now moved 200 in the Y. And the other two did not. So let's look at the node. It's pretty simple. Add relative location. It's not going to come up. It's not going to come up because it needs a scene component. And if you notice here, it's basically going to be, hey, let's add the relative location. We click on it, and we can fill out the following information. Our target is going to be a scene component reference. Now remember, a scene component, let's pull up my example that I'm using, which will be these ones, right? No, that's my rotating one. In my boxes, here we go. It's going to be this one. A scene component is basically a component of a blueprint that is going to have a transform available to it. One of its parents is a scene component parent. And it's going to give you access to the transform. That's why, for example, I can change the cube, the sphere, and the cylinder. But I can't change pawn sensing because it has no scene component and no transform. And, of course, the root itself technically is a scene component as well. It has to actually be a scene component to be a root. So you could move the scene component root object using the add relative location version. But traditionally, you'd use the actor version, which removes the whole thing. So speaking of the actor version, that's pretty much where the difference is. The add relative location basically adds these values to the current location of the scene component that you've targeted relative to where it is currently. What do I mean by relative? Well, if we say right now, there we go. Let's whoops, wrong item. Yeah, that's the right item. Repossess. If we say right now my actor is at 00150, but my cube, which I'm targeting, is gonna be at there we go. Stupid hate this. Okay. So the relative location right now of my cube is basically zero zero zero. For its current position internally. Oh, I chose rotation. Uh, there we go. So my world location of this item is 00150. I want to add relatively to my current location a value. So if I wanted to make it go up 100 units, I would do add relative location 100 to the Z and hit enter. And you'll notice it's now 250. I'm not setting, I'm adding, and I'm adding to the current value. Because it's an addition, you can use subtraction. So if I said, hey, let's go negative 100, we're now back down to 150. And of course, it works either way. I could say, for example, negative 150, and now we're back down to zero. So that is what that node is for. It's to take the current scene component. In this case, I'm targeting a Q. Take the current location. Add relatively a positive or negative number for an X, Y, and a Z, and then set it. Now we have sweeping and teleporting. These follow the normal rules for when we're working with transforms and movement. Sweeping, if it's enabled, will physically stop if it needs to block based on a collision, or it will trigger an overlap if it hits a trigger. Well, easy enough, we'll hit play. I'll type in 500, and you'll notice the cube stops. If I uncheck sweep and hit play, we are no longer checking for collision. I type 500, and it goes to the other side of the wall. So that is something to keep in mind. That is what sweeping is for. It's for triggering overlaps and collisions. Teleporting is for physics. If I have physics enabled and I'm doing something such as hair on a character or something like that, and I'm moving this item off planet, all of a sudden I'm transporting it, I'm teleporting it, and I don't want physics to freak out because of the large distance in a short amount of time. I'll tell it I'm teleporting, and it's going to pause or suspend physics temporarily while it does its move. If we're using sweeping, we get a hit result, and we can just break the hit result if we want. 
or use it as is, and it'll tell us if we hit something, overlap something, what we hit, and all the normal results from a hit result. That's it. That's going to wrap it up. This is basically like adding uh, an offset to an actor, except it's to an individual component. So make sure you target a scene component. Because it's relative when we're adding it, it can be a plus or a minus value that you're putting in. Make sure you sweep if you want it to be blocked or to trigger something. Make sure you teleport it if it's a large distance and you're using physics. And if you want the hit result, well, we have a hit result.